Good afternoon. This is Pamela, and you are listening to Watchmen on the Pod. We are going to begin a new book in the Bible, Ecclesiastes it is. And I want to read the foreword here that uh, William H. Sanford had written. And let's not forget that I will be reading from the complete Messianic Aleph Tob scriptures that was compiled by William H. Sanford. The book of Ecclesiastes, and in Hebrew is Kolet, Koholet, something like that, K-O-H-E-L-E-T. The book of Ecclesiastes does not directly identify its author, but there are many verses that imply Solomon is the author. The name Ecclesiastes in Hebrew means member of an assembly but is often thought to mean preacher. There are some verses that may suggest a different person wrote the book after Solomon's death, which could have been several hundred years later. But the conventional belief is that Solomon is indeed the author. Solomon's reign as king of Israel lasted from 970 BC to approximately 930 BC. The book is believed to have been written towards the end of his reign, approximately 935 B.C. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes is a book which puts into perspective a narrative of the preacher, KJV, or the teacher, NIV, and reveals the depression that inevitably results from seeking happiness through worldly possessions. The book is a perspective of the world through the eyes of wisdom and explores the meaning of humanity in regard to most every form of worldly pleasure, and nothing seems to make sense except that faith in Elohim is the only way to find personal meaning and happiness. In the end, he decides to accept the fact that life is brief and ultimately worthless without personal commitment and obedience to Elohim instead of temporary pleasure. Amen, amen, amen. <clears throat> Chapter 1, Ecclesiastes. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit has man of all his labor, in which he labors under the sun? One generation goes, and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises, and the sun goes down, and hastens to its place where it rises. The wind goes toward the south, and turns around to the north, and turns about continually in its course, and the wind returns again to its circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the place where the rivers go, there they go again. All things are full of weariness. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is that which shall be, and that which has been done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, See, this is new, or has been long ago in the ages which were before us? There is no remembrance of the former generations, neither shall there be any remembrance of the latter generations that are to come, among those that shall come after. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I gave my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom concerning all that is done under the sun. It is a sore travail that Elohim has given to the sons of men to be exercised with it. I saw all the works that are done under the sun, and surely all is vanity and a striving after wind. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is lacking cannot be numbered. I communed with my own heart, saying, Lo, I have gotten great wisdom above all that were before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart has had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And I applied my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived 
that this also was a striving after win. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. Chapter 2 I said in my heart, Come now, I will test you with pleasure. Therefore enjoy pleasure, and surely this also was vanity. I said of laughter, it is mad, and of pleasure, what does it accomplish? I searched in my heart to give to wine myself, yet my heart guided me with wisdom and how to lay hold on folly until I might see what was good for the sons of men that they should do under heaven all the days of their life. <clears throat> I made great works. I built houses. I planted vineyards. I made gardens and parks, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit. I made pools of water to water from it the forest where trees were reared. I bought men servants and maid servants, and had servants born in my house. Also I had great possessions of herds and flocks, above all that were before me in Jerusalem. I gathered also silver and gold, the, the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces. I acquired men singers and women singers, and the delights of the sons of men, musical instruments, and that of all sorts. So I became great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me, and whatever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I did not withhold my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced because of all my labor, and this was my portion from all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had brought, and on that labor, and on the labor, that I had labored to do, and surely all this was vanity, and a striving after wind, and there was no profit under the sun. I turned myself to consider wisdom, and madness, and folly, for what can the man do that comes after the king, which has done, which has been done long ago? Then I saw that wisdom excels folly, as far as light excels darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, and the fool walks in darkness, and yet I perceive that the same event happens to them all. Then said I in my heart, as it happens to the fool, so will it happen even to me, and why was I then more wise? Then said I in my heart, this, that this also is vanity. For the wise man, even as the fool, there is no remembrance forever, seeing that in the days to come all will have been long forgotten. And how does the wise man die, even as the fool? So I hated life, because the work that is brought under the sun was so grievous to me, for all is vanity and a striving after when. And I hated, and hated I all my labor, in which I labored under the sun seeing that I must leave it to the man that shall be after me. And who knows whether he will be a wise man or a fool? Yet will he have rule over all my labor, in which I have labored, and in which I have showed myself wise under the sun. This also is vanity. Therefore I went about to cause to despair my heart concerning all the labor, in which I had labored under the sun. Hold on one minute. <clears throat> for there is a man whose labor is with wisdom and with knowledge and with skillfulness yet to a man that has not labored therein shall he leave it for his portion this also is vanity and a great evil for what has a man of all his labor and of the striving of his heart in which he labors under the sun for all his days are but sorrows and his travail is grief yea even in the night his heart takes no rest this also is vanity. There is nothing better for a man that he should eat and drink and make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw, that it is from the hand of Elohim. For who can eat or who can enjoyment have enjoyment more than I? For to the man that pleases him, Elohim, gives wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he gives travail, to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that which pleases Elohim. This also is vanity and a striving after wind. Chapter 3 Ecclesiastes, therefore, is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven, 
a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What profit has he that works in that in that in which he labors? I saw the travail which Elohim has given to the sons of men to be exercised with it. Everything he has made beautiful in its time. Also the world he has set in their heart so that no man can find out from Adam, man, the work that Elohim has made from the beginning even to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and to do good so long as they live. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy good in all his labor is the gift of Elohim. I know that whatever Elohim does, it shall be forever. Nothing can put it to it, nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And Elohim has done it, that men should fear before him. That which has been long ago, and that which is to be, has long ago been. And Elohim requires an account of what is passed away. And moreover, I saw under the sun, in the place of justice, that sickness was there. And in the place of righteousness, that wickedness was there. I said in my heart, the righteous and the wicked Elohim will judge. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in my heart, it is because of the sons of men that Elohim may prove them and that they may see that they themselves are but as beasts. For that which befalls the sons of men befalls beasts. Even one thing befalls them. As the one dies, so dies the other. Yea, they have all one breath. And man has no advantage above the beast. For all is vanity. All go to one place. All are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knows the spirit of man, whether it goes upward, and the spirit of the beast, whether it goes downward to the earth? Wherefore I saw that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his works, for that is his portion. For who shall bring him back to see what shall be after him? Chapter 4 <clears throat> When I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun, and surely the tears of such as were oppressed, and they had no comforter, and on the side of their oppressors, the oppressors there was power, but they had no comforter. Wherefore praise I the dead that have been long dead more than the living that are yet alive? Yea, better is he than both they which has not yet been, who has not seen work and the evil that is done under the sun. Then considered I all the labor and every skillful work for that that for this is let me reread that number four. Then consider I all labor and every skillful work that for this a man is envied of his neighbor. There also is vanity and striving after this also is vanity and striving after when the fool folds together his hands and consumes his own flesh. Better is a handful with quietness than two handfuls with labor and striving after wind. Then I returned and saw vanity under the sun. There is one that is alone, and he has not a second. Yea, he has neither son nor brother. Yet is there no end of all his labor. Neither are his eyes satisfied with riches. For who then says he, do I labor and deprive my soul of pleasure? This also is vanity, yea, it is a sore travail. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. 
But woe to him that is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have warmth. But how can one warm alone? And if a man prevails against him that is alone, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Better is a poor and wise youth than an old and foolish king, who knows not how to receive admonition any more. For out of prison he came forth to be king, yea, even his in his kingdom he has born he was born poor. I saw, which is considered, all the living that walk under the sun, that they were with the youth, the second that stood up in his steed. There was no end of all the people, even of all them over who he was, yet that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this also is vanity and a striving after wind. Chapter 5 Keep your foot when you go to the house of Elohim. For to draw near to hear is better than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they know not that they do evil. Be not rash with your mouth, and let not your heart be hasty to utter anything before Elohim. For Elohim is in heaven, and you upon earth. Therefore let your words be few. For a dream comes with a multitude of business, and a fool's voice with a multitude of words. When you make a vow to Elohim, defer not to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools that which you vow to pay. Better is it that you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. Suffer not your mouth to cause to send it with, er with an error. Let me reread it again. Suffer not your mouth to cause to sin your flesh, neither say you before the angel that it was an error. Why should Elohim be angry at your voice and destroy the work of your hands? For in the multitude of dreams there are vanities and in many words, but Elohim you should fear. If you see the oppression of the poor, and the violent taking away of justice and righteousness in a province, marvel not at the matter. For one higher than the high regards, and there are higher than they. Moreover, the prophet of the earth is for all. The king himself is served by the field. He that loves silver shall not be, shall not be satisfied with silver. Nor he that loves abundance with increase. This also is vanity. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what advantage is there to the owner there, save the beholding of them with his eyes? The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eats little or much. But the fullness of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. There is a grievous evil, which I saw under the sun, namely riches kept by the owner there, is, there to his hurt. And those riches perish by evil to venture. And if he has gotten a son, there is nothing in his hand. And as he came forth from his mother's womb, naked shall he go again as he came. And he shall take nothing for his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. And this also is a grievous evil, that in all points as he came, so shall he go. And what profit has he that he, la that he labors for the wind? All his days also he eats in darkness, and he is sore vexed, and has sickness and wrath. Surely that which I saw to be good and to be calmly is for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy good in all his labor, in which he labors under the sun all the days of his life, which Elohim has given him, for this is his portion. Every man also to who Elohim has given riches and wealth and has given him power to eat there and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of Elohim. For he shall not much remember days of his life because Elohim answers him in the joy of his heart. And I, I'm not sure. I was thinking, I think I'm just going to read the entire book. Chapter 6. There is an evil which I saw under the sun, and it is heavy upon men. A man 
to who Elohim gives riches, wealth, and honor, so that he lacks nothing for his soul of all that he desires. Yet Elohim does not give him power to eat of it, but an alien foreigner eats it. This is vanity, and it is an evil disease. If a man begat a hundred children and lives many years, so that the days of his years are many, but his soul is not satisfied with goodness, and moreover, he has no burial, I say that an untimely birth is better than he. For it comes in vanity and departs in darkness, and the name there is covered with darkness. Moreover, it has not, been, it has not seen the sun, nor known it. This has rest rather than the other. Yea, though he live a thousand years twice told, and yet has not seen goodness, do not all go to one place? All the labor of man is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not filled. For what advantage has the wise more than the fool? Or what has the poor man that knows how to walk before the living? Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire. This also is vanity and striving after wind. Whatever has been, the name there has was given long ago, and it is known <clears throat> what man is. Neither can he contend with him that is mightier than he. Seeing there are many things that increase vanity, what is man, what man? No, what is man the better? For who knows what is good for man in his life? All the days of his vain life, which he passes like a shadow. For who can tell a man what shall be after him? under the sun number seven a good name is better than precious oil and the day of death than the day of one's birth it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting for that is the end of all men and the living will lay it to his heart sorrow is better than laughter for by the sadness of the countenance the heart is made glad the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of pleasure. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of the fool. This also is vanity. Surely oppression makes mad a wise man, and a gift destroys the heart. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning there, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Be not hasty in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Do not say what is the cause that the former days were better than these, for you ask not wisely concerning this. Wisdom is as good as an inheritance, yea, more excellent is it for them that see the sun. For wisdom is a defense, even as money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him that has it. Consider the work of Elohim, for who can make that straight, which he has made crooked? In the day of prosperity, be joyful, and in the day of adversity, consider, yea, the one side by side with the other has made Elohim to the end that man should not find anything that shall be after him. All things I saw in my days of vanity. There is a righteous man that perish in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolongs his life in his evil doing. Be not righteous overmuch, neither make yourself overwise. Why should you destroy yourself? Do not be wicked, neither be you foolish. Why should you die before your time? It is good that you should take hold of this, yea, also from that do not withdraw <clears throat> your hand. For he that fears Elohim shall come forth of them all. Wisdom is a strength to the wise more than ten rulers that are in a city. Surely there is not a righteous man upon earth that does good and sins not. Also take not heed to all words that are spoken, lest you hear your servant curse you. For oftentimes also your own heart knows that you yourself likewise have cursed others. All this have I proved in wisdom. I said I will be wise, but it was far from me. That which is, is far off, exceeding deep. Who can find it out? I turned about, my heart was set to know and to search out and to seek wisdom. 
and the reason of things to know that wickedness is folly and the foolishness is madness. And I might find more, no, and I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nest whose hands are bands. Whoever pleases Elohim shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Surely this have I found, says the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account which my soul still seeks, but I have not found, no, I have, let's see, I have not one man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I found not. Surely this only have I found that has made Elohim man upright, and they have sought out many schemes. Chapter 8 who is as the wise man who is as the wise man and who knows the interpretation of a thing a man's wisdom makes his face to shine and the hardness of his face is changed i counsel you keep the king's command and that in regard of the oath of elohim be not hasty to go out of his presence persist not in an evil thing for he does whatever pleases him for the king's word has power, and who may say to him, What are you doing? Whoever keeps the commandment shall know no evil thing, and a wise man hearts discerns time and judgment. For to every purpose there is a time and judgment, because the misery of man is great upon him. For he knows not that which shall be, for who can tell him how it shall be? There is no man that has power over the spirit to retain the spirit, Neither has he power over the day of death, and there is no discharge in war, neither shall wickedness deliver those that given to it. All this I saw and applied my heart to every work that is done under the sun. There is a time in which one man has power over another to his hurt. So I saw the wicked buried, and they came to the grave, and they that had done right went away from the holy place and were forgotten in the city. This also is vanity, because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set to in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and prolong his days, yet surely I know that he shall be well with them that fear Elohim, that fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he fears not before Elohim. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth, that there are righteous men to whom it happens according to the work of the wicked. Again, there are wicked men to whom it happens according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. Then commended I mirth, pleasure. Because a man has no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be joyful, for that shall abide with him in his labor all the days of his life, which Elohim has given him under the sun. When I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done be upon the earth, for also there is that neither day nor night sees sleep with his eyes, then I beheld all the work of Elohim that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. Because whoever, however much a man labor to seek it out, he shall not find it. Yea, moreover, though a wise man think to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it. <clears throat> Chapter 9 For all this I laid to my heart even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hands of Elohim. Whether it be love or hatred, man knows it not. All is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean, to him that sacrifices, and to him that sacrifices not, as is the good, so is the sinner, and he that swears as he that fears an oath. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun. 
that there is one event to all, yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after they go to the dead. For to him that is joined with all the living there is hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Moreover, their love and their hatred and their envy is perished long ago. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Go your way, eat your bread with joy, and drink your wine with a merry heart. For now accepted Elohim your works. Let your garments be always white, and let not your head lack oil. Live joyfully with the wife who you loved all the days of your life of vanity, which he has given you under the sun all your days of vanity. For that is your portion in life and in your labor in which you labor under the sun. Whatsoever your hands find to do, do it with your might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in Sheol, in Frenzy's grave, where knowledge, no, where you are going, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. For also knows not man his time, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, even so are the sons of men snared in an evil time, when, in, when, it suddenly, when it falls suddenly upon them. Moreover, this I saw, wisdom under the sun, and it seemed great to me. There was a little city and few men within it. There was a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and by his wisdom delivered he the city, yet no man remembered poor man. Then said I, Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. The words of the wise, heard in quiet, are better than the cry of him that rules among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. Chapter 10 Dead flies cause the oil of the perfum perfumer to send forth an evil odor. So does a little folly outweigh wisdom and honor. A wise man's heart is, as, is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. Yes, also when the fool walks by the way, his understanding fails him, and he says to everyone that he is a fool. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against you, leave not your place, for gentleness amends great offenses. There is an evil which I saw under the sun, as it were an error which proceeds from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in a low place. I saw servants upon <clears throat> horses and princes walking like servants upon the earth. He that digs a pit shall fall into it. And whoever breaks through a wall, a serpent shall bite him. Whoever hews out stones shall be hurt with it, and he that cleaves wood is endangered by it. If the iron is blunt and one does not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. If a serpent may bite when it is charmed, then is there no advantage in the charmer? The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is mischievous madness. A fool also multiplies words, yet man knows not what shall be, and that which shall be after him, who can tell him? The labor of fools wearies every one of them, for he knows not how to go to the city. Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child and your princes eat in the morning. Happy are you, O land, when your king is the son of nobles and your princes eat in due season, for strength and not for drunkenness. But slothfulness the roof sinks in, and through idleness of the hands the house leaks. 
A feast is made for laughter, and wine makes glad the life, and money answers all things. Revile not the king, no, not in your thought, and revile not the rich in your bedchamber. For a bird of the heavens shall carry the voice, and that which has wings shall tell the matter. Chapter 11 Cast your bread upon the waters, for you shall find it many days, after many days. Give a portion to seven, yea, even to eight, for you know not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falls, there shall it be. He that observes the wind shall not sow, and he that regards the clouds shall not reap. As you know not what is the way of the wind, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so you do not know the work of Elohim, who makes all. In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening withhold not your hand. For you know not which shall prosper, whether this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Truly, the light is sweet and pleasant it is for the eyes to behold the sun. If a, yea, if a man live many years, let him rejoice in them all, but let him remember days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that comes in vanity, rejoice, O man in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth, and walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But you know that for all these things Elohim will bring you into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Chapter 12 Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil day comes and the year draws near, when you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few and those that look out of the window shall be darkened and the doors shall be shut in the street. When the sound of the grinding is low, and one shall rise up at the voice of a bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low, yea, they shall be afraid of that which is high, and terror shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall blossom, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goes to his everlasting home, and the mourners go about the street. Before the silver cord is loose, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to Elohim who gave it. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. And further, because the preacher was wise, he still taught knowledge to the people, yea, he pondered and sought out, and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written uprightly, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads, and as nails will faster as the words of the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And furthermore, my son is admonished, of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. This is the conclusion of the matter. All has been heard. Elohim fear and his commandments keep, for this is the whole duty of man. For every work Elohim shall bring into judgment with every hidden thing, whether it is good or whether it is evil. And that, brothers and sisters, is the end of the book of Ecclesiastes. There's a lot of things in it. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Go back over, re-listen to this, or open up your Bible if you have one and read it in the translation that you have or in the language that you speak. But go over it, ask the Lord to give you wisdom for understanding what it means and also the ability to apply it to your everyday life. That's what's important. When we read the Word, we got to make sure that what we read, we understand, and then we apply it to our lives. I love you all so very much. Keep your eyes on Jesus. 
your nose in the book which is the Word of God, and embed the Word of God upon the tablets of your heart, so you will not sin against God or be deceived. Until next time, be blessed.